uh, Vice President Gore made some startling and in some cases I think deeply misleading assertions. Um, he cited Bernie Madoff and described bad information and talked about massive fraud. But in fact, I think that uh, it's very important to look in detail at his own testimony. Uh, he pointed, he said, for example, the rate, uh, this is a quote, the rate of new discoveries is falling for energy. That's factually not true. In the last three years, we have found 100 years of natural gas in the United States because we now have new technology drilling at 8,000 feet, and we have literally found 100 years of natural gas in the last three years. In Brazil, they found three fields, the, the Tupi field alone in 2007, a second field recently, and just in January, an Exxon Hess consortium found a third field. Brazilian reserves have gone from 10 billion barrels to 100 billion. But of course, that's an offshore Atlantic Ocean field, which is which is up until last October illegal to look for in this country. The Bakken field in, New, in North Dakota and Montana has jumped from a 1995 U.S. Geological Survey estimate of 151 million barrels. In April of 2008, they raised it by 2,500 percent. They now believe there are between three and four billion barrels of oil in the Bakken field. What Vice President Gore does not tell you is that having supported the government stopping the exploration for oil, having supported the government stopping the development of shale oil in Colorado, having supported the reduction in the use of coal where we have 27 percent of the world reserves, we're then told that these government-imposed shortages prove we have no resources. That's fundamentally not true. And yet the Obama budget proposes to raise taxes on oil and, and uh, natural gas development at exactly the time this economy needs more development and more jobs. On the facts of climate change, we need a national inquiry. And, and let me be quite clear in the spirit of the commercial I did with Speaker Pelosi at Vice President Gore's request. I want to invite Vice President Gore to join in a nonpartisan inquiry. And I'd love to have this committee agree to help sponsor it so that every high school and college campus this coming October could have a discussion about the facts. For example, Vice President Gore in his testimony talked about the likelihood of a 20-foot rise in sea level. Let me say, if we had a catastrophic 20-foot rise in sea level, that would be bad. I'm happy to stipulate. That would be bad. However, even the, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change said the probable maximum is between 7 and 23 inches over the next 100 years. Now, 7 to 23 inches over 100 years is radically different than 20 feet. But let me go a couple stages further. A recent report on Greenland, this is uh, from the American Geophysical Union, a report uh, said the following, quote, so much for Greenland's, Greenland ice's Armageddon. And this is a quote within that. It has come to an end, glaciologist Tavi Murray of Swansea University in the United Kingdom said during a session at the meeting, quote, there seems to have been a synchronous switch off of the speed up, she said, nearly everywhere around southeast Greenland, outlet glacier flows have returned to the levels of 2000. That is from January of this year. Uh, on the question of uh, whether or not Antarctic ice is in fact shrinking, let me just quote from the Australians who said, slightly longer, Antarctica has 80 percent of the Earth's ice and, and uh, I mean 90 percent of the Earth's ice and 80 percent of its fresh water. Uh, according to the Australians, extensive melting of Antarctica ice sheets would be required to raise sea levels substantially. Ice is melting in parts of West Antarctica. Uh, the, the destabilization of the Wilkins Ice Shelf generated international headlines. However, the picture is very different in East Antarctica, which includes the territory claimed by Australia. East Antarctica is four times the size of West Antarctica, and parts of it are cooling. The Scientific Committee on Antarctic Research report prepared for last week's meeting of Antarctic Treaty Nations in Washington noted the South Pole had shown significant cooling in recent decades. Australia Antarctic Division Glaciology Program head Ian Allison said sea ice losses in West Antarctica over the past 30 years had been more than offset by increases in the Ross Sea region, just one sector of East Antarctica. Sea ice conditions have remained stable in Antarctica generally, Allison said. So, Ice core drilling and the uh, fast ice off Australia's Davis Station in East Antarctica by the Antarctic Climate and Ecosystems Cooperative Research Center shows that last year the ice had a maximum thickness of 1.89 meters, its densest in 10 years, close quote. Finally, on coral die-offs, it's hard to understand why carbon dioxide or current temperatures would lead to coral die-offs. Coral was very abundant in earlier eras when the Earth's temperature was as much as 10 to 15 degrees warmer 
and atmospheric uh, CO2 was two to seven times higher. I'm an amateur paleontologist. I would be glad to take the vice president to the Smithsonian or the American Museum of Natural History, where we can look at all sorts of uh, marine invertebrate life, uh, which is collected as, di as fossils because, in fact, they use carbon quite effectively. All I'm suggesting is that there is a sufficient debate over facts, not over theories, over facts, that it would be very useful to have an inquiry on every co college and high school campus, allow everyone to present their evidence, and discuss, in a way, a genuine dialogue about this.